Hi, I'm Lindsay Ellingson. I'm a mother, I'm an entrepreneur, and I've been a model for almost 20 years now. And I was diagnosed with scoliosis when I was in fifth grade. I was a dancer and a gymnast growing up like so many people in this community. And there was um, one gymnastic session in particular where my coach was pushing down on my back and he noticed that the left side of my back was raised. And so he said, this looks like it could be scoliosis. You should go see a doctor. Um, so everything just happened so fast. And I was, you know, I was so young. It was, I was just really confused. It's such a whirlwind. I went to my doctor, um, I had an X-ray done and they discovered that I had an S shape curve and um, they recommended bracing immediately for 23 and a half hours a day. So basically I was <laughs> only able to take my brace off for a shower. Um, so I had to unfortunately um, quit gymnastics because that does take a lot of um, movement. Um, and again, this was like years ago before um, doctors, have, doctors are now recommending that you can continue your activities um, and take the brace off. Um, so anyways, I was braced immediately for 23 and a half hours a day. And that was in fifth grade, sixth grade, and seventh grade. And then, um, you know, I was a very shy, introverted, like young girl trying to cover up this back brace. I didn't share this with anybody. This was before social media. So I just felt very alone and very isolated. It was a very traumatic time having to wear a back brace, especially because anytime you lean over, it kind of like pokes out of your shirt. Um, so I, you know, I, I struggled with that for a few years. That was definitely tough. And every time I went um, to the doctor, I think you, I went every six months or something like that to check on my curves and the progression. And every time I would see the x-rays, they would progress more and more and more every single time, despite the back brace. So at a certain point, um, I had continued dancing throughout all of this. Um, at a certain point, I was just kind of fed up with the back brace and I started taking it off for practice. So. Um, in seventh and eighth grade, I was wearing it only 16 hours a day, but I was able to dance and I was so much happier. I was like moving my body and just felt like I could be a part of like my dance team without having this limitation. It was amazing. Um, and then in eighth grade, I had that last x-ray where my doctor said, okay, these curves are pretty serious. We, um, spinal fusion surgery is recommended. Um, so for me, I, I mean, it was a choice that I made to stop wearing the back brace. I'm not really sure. I might have ended up in that same situation either way. I'm not really sure, but um, I, I don't regret it at all. Um, so when I was 13 that summer after eighth grade, I had spinal fusion surgery. Um, I grew up in California. Um, we went to the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. And I remember um, meeting my doctor for the first time, Dr. Tolo. He was amazing. It's such a peaceful, like calming presence. And he had this big album full of his um, patients and pictures of them mountain biking and doing yoga and dancing and all these things that they continue to do um, after having spinal fusion surgery. So that definitely gave me some hope and reassured me because I was terrified, I was so scared. I wasn't sure what life was gonna be like having my spine fused, if I was gonna be able to continue dancing and um, if it would just feel so uncomfortable, like having my spine fused. So there was so many fears. Um, I really had to work hard mentally to overcome that. So I, I read a lot about how to prepare for the surgery. Um, one was physically, one was mentally, to just focus on the positive, to, to really, you know, I started like just running and running and trying to be as active as I could to stay as healthy as I was just so determined to get through this and get back to a better place to get back on the dance floor and just be a normal kid again. Um, and I remember leaving the hospital and, you know, after those first couple of days, I I stopped taking any pain medicine. I didn't press the morphine button. I was like very proud of myself. I was like, I'm gonna do this. Um, and not everybody has to do that. I was just like, for some reason, I was so determined to like get through it on my own. <laughs> Um, so I just, I remember like getting in the car on the way home from the hospital and just feeling this intense high, like so happy. I'm like, oh my God, I'm only 13 years old. I got through that. I feel great. I don't have to wear this back brace anymore. 
And I just felt like so happy. It was like such a strange emotion to feel after having spinal fusion surgery. And I remember it to this day, like how strong I was at 13 years old. Um, I'm 38 now and I still look back at myself like that young girl. I'm like, wow, if my young self can do that, I can do anything. So that was really a moment and a defining moment in my life. It's given me so much strength. And with any challenge that I faced, I know that I have the strength inside to overcome it, no matter what it is. So I really think, and I, I know that so many people in this scoliosis community share this same level of strength and like this depth of character that we all have to really achieve our dreams and overcome you know challenges in our life. Uh, so I, within six months, I was back on the dance floor. I was dancing. I danced competitively through high school and into college, and then I was scouted when I was in college and I had the opportunity to move to Paris and start my modeling career. And so I kind of put college on the back burner, never went back. <laughs> um, and I started my modeling career. I moved to Paris. I met John Galliano from Christian Dior the day that I landed and he booked me for his fashion show um, that season. And then I continued to walk in hundreds of fashion shows. I did a lot of editorials. And then after a few years, um, I became a Victoria's Secret angel. I walked in that show for about eight years, carried some of the heaviest wings, um, did a lot. And then, you know, one of my proudest achievements um, is becoming a mom. And I have two sons. My son Carter is three and my son Rowan is a year and a half. And so that was another kind of scary, challenging time, just being pregnant and going through um, labor and delivery and just the unknown with all of that. But um, thankfully it all turned out okay for the most part. <laughs> um, and I can answer more questions about that if you guys want. Um, they, so for me, because I'm fused to L4, which is pretty low, um, my my first son, I, was, I wanted to try the epidural, but the anesthesiologist was not comfortable trying. So I had to do um, all natural. Uh, which I had been preparing for um, mentally, like with hypnobirthing classes. And my second son, we, um, I had him here in New York and we, that, that anesthesiologist decided, let's just give it a shot, let's try this. And um, they, because of where I'm fused to, is it's a really like tricky spot. That's where they like to put the, um, the epidural. And so they put it in totally fine. Everything was great. Um, and then, it didn't really work completely. I was kind of numbed from my hips down. So it was something, but it didn't numb me completely. But again, I was able to overcome that really, I mean, it's an amazing experience, but it is very challenging as well with the pain and everything. But mentally, you know, you can just overcome so much if you put your mind to it. And I prepared with hypnobirthing for um, both births and deliveries and I was totally fine. And at the end it was like, just an amazing achievement. You feel so proud of yourself. You have these beautiful babies. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, everything has been fine. Um, and I just, now that I'm 38 years old, I have had two kids and it's how many years post-op, um, <laughs> you guys do the math. Um, I, now I just have to really focus on keeping my core strong and doing activities um, to really strengthen my core and keep my lower back um, moving because I do feel a lot of like tightness and stiffness in my lower back, um, sometimes pain. So I do have to just kind of um, focus on that a bit more. But other than that, um, it hasn't held me back at all. And if anything, it's given me so much strength in my life. And I'm really proud of my scar. Hi, Lindsay. I'm Allie. I find I'm 16 years old, but I find your story so inspiring because I'm not a dancer and I wanted to do gymnastics when I was younger and I got into pageantry and I aspire to be a model, too. So I really find like your story so just so entertaining and interesting to me. So my first question is, how did the experience of undergoing a spinal fusion surgery change your perspective on life and your personal capabilities? Hi, Ali. So nice to meet you. Um, so like I was describing, um, I really think that going through such a traumatic thing at 13 years old makes you so much stronger because 
I really, I can, I continue to look back at my 13 year, 13 year old self. And it gives me strength to see that I was able to get through that traumatic time bracing and then spinal fusion surgery and that recovery. And I made it through and I continued dancing. Um, it's, it's really, I mean, it's a major surgery, like, you know, and to get through that, I just think that you, I think that everybody would probably agree with me when you, you come out of it feeling so much stronger and determined to like achieve your goals, you just find this inner strength that you really didn't know you had. So I think that's kind of pretty cool and something we all share. Going on to that, I've just, your story is just so relatable to me personally, as I had surgery when I was 13 and the struggles of having a brace, I totally understand. It's mm -hmm. definitely not the best feeling. Um, so my second question would be, how did it feel to share your story publicly for the first time? And what prompted you to share it when you did? So I actually um, publicly shared my story. I believe it was in 2017 with Setting Spoliosis Straight. It was a parent and patient event. Um, and I was, you know, I was kind of unsure about how I was going to feel about sharing my story because I, I never really talked about it unless somebody saw my scar and asked me. Um, but it's amazing, like this community of people that I have been able to connect with. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to now like talk about it and share. I shared on, I shared a video on Instagram recently and it's amazing. Like the amount of people that reach out and just feel kind of relieved or to give anybody a little bit of, of hope to let them know, like, it's going to be okay. You're going to go on to live a normal life. Like all these things, like it, it just um, in some way, it makes it all worth it to be able to like help those that are going through the same thing. Thank you. I really mm -hmm. like it. It's very inspiring. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Christina. It's so nice to meet you, Lindsay. So my first question was, I remember that during my surgery, I was definitely afraid of general anesthesia. So I was wondering in terms of preparing for your surgery mentally, what challenges did you face in general? And were you afraid of general anesthesia? I was afraid of needles. Like I had a, and I still do to this day, I've been through so much, but it's still needles that get me. Um, so, I mean, I, I just remember at that age, like remember seeing that, that photo album that my doctor had showed me to see like kids overcoming this and like doing all these amazing activities, like things that I couldn't even do at the time. Like I, I still don't know how to mountain bike. <laughs> they were like mountain biking, doing all these really cool things. I think that kind of put my mind at ease a little bit. Um, and just, I was, I was, I remember being like very active. Like I said, I was like continuing to dance and like run just to get my mind off of it, to not focus so much on the fear. Um, and then that day of surgery, I still remember going in and being so afraid of them, like putting, they had to put like the needle in my hand. They numbed it before and everything, but I was like, so afraid. Um, and then they gave me something to calm me down as well, which, which helped, but it's, I know it's, but I think that we build things up so much more in our heads. And then when you really go through it, it's not as bad as you think. And I've gone through like anesthesia a few times in my life and it's really not that it's really like of all things to be afraid of, like I have to tell myself it's really okay. Like within two seconds, you're asleep um, and they help you and they'll calm you down and you have nurse, amazing nurses and doctors there and your family to support you. So, um, but I totally relate to that. That's so funny how you said in two seconds, you fall asleep because I don't remember anything before yeah. that. Um, so, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, so my second question, um, you kind of answered, which has to do with pregnancy. And if you found that to be a challenge with spinal fusion. Yeah. So I kind of came up with a second question. Um, <laughs> what is the best way you found to strengthen your back to relieve any pain, like maybe like Pilates or yoga or anything like that? So, yeah, I've, I don't dance as much. I wish I did. I need to get back into dancing, but, um, Pilates and yoga have been amazing for anything that's going to keep my core strong is really what I focus on, but I honestly have to do a better job of it. Like having two kids and like a business and all this stuff has really, I, I haven't been putting myself first lately. <laughs> so I'm definitely feeling that lower back pain more. So I have to just like get back into that and really focus even just like exercises at home. I'm going to do some of the things that Paige recommended. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a constant, um, kind of like it, we, we constantly have to work on our bodies to strengthen our bodies. Um, we just have to kind of give it a little bit of extra love. Thank you so much. Your story was very relatable. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paige Fraser, a scoliosis advocate and professional dancer. Really excited to be um, here and asking you these questions because I remember seeing your picture in, um, oh my goodness, the name just slipped my mind, Marcus John's organization. So I think it's oh, yeah. back. You yes. Were there. yes, I love your picture. And I, cause I didn't see it, it was like your bag and it's so beautiful. Yes, yeah. I've connected it now. <laughs> yeah, I love that this is like a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to skip my first question because you already answered it in terms of how you felt when you were diagnosed. Um, but my second question is, I guess if you were to look back and now, you know, you, you talked about how you had to discontinue gymnastics. Do you think like if you could have, you would have continued with your gymnastics practice, was that something you really wanted to like, you saw yourself like doing up until, you know, maybe an Olympic level, if you could have? Now, okay, so looking back, I'm way too tall to be a gymnast. So <laughs> like besides the fact, um, but, but seriously, I wish, I mean, and this was, I still can't do the math, 20 something years ago. <laughs> I was, like 10, I was 10 years old. Um, and I'm 38 now. Okay. 28 years ago. God, um, 28 years ago. So that like, they didn't, I don't think that they had the studies that showed that you could take the back raise off. Cause, um, I think the last time I was here with you guys with studying scoliosis straight, I heard some people saying they took their back brace off for 12 hours a day and 16 hours. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I wish that I was able to just live a, be a more normal childhood in general and not have to wear the back. I mean, and also I grew up in the desert in Palm Springs. It was so hot and uncomfortable. Um, so I do looking back, I do, I mean, I guess I got spinal fusion surgery anyways. I wish I would have been able to just take the back brace off more if I, if I really think about it. Okay. And my last question, how did it feel to walk in your first major fashion show, knowing all you had overcome? Gosh. Um, so my, my very first like major fashion show was Christian Dior. And all I could think about was how uncomfortable the shoes were. <laughs> no, but really <laughs> I could barely walk down the, it, it's actually amazing how often I forget that I have a spinal fusion and how often I forget that I have this like scar on my back. Cause I've really just continued to do pretty much everything. It hasn't held me back at all in my life. If anything, it's given me more strength to pursue my dreams, like I've said. Um, and the only thing I can't do is a backbend. Um, so it's it's not something that I was really thinking about. Um, but I think like if I look a little bit deeper, I probably was on that runway because I had the strength to pursue that dream because of that 13-year-old self that you know found that inner strength that I've had ever since. Wow. Awesome. And I'm going to add one more that I didn't list. Um, as someone who is thinking of having a child eventually, I'm 32. Um, did you have any anxiety, like fear about it before you and your partner decided to have a child? I um, I knew no matter what, I wanted to have kids too. Like I was like, I don't care what I have to do. I want a child. <laughs> um, so it wasn't anything that I like. I definitely had anxiety about it because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, um, receive an epidural. That was my biggest thing. And I was just questioning, can I handle the pain? Can I handle that without that sort of like pain medicine? Um, and so I had a lot of anxiety about that, but the way I dealt with that was really hypnobirthing. Um, and real, I mean, it's definitely like, it's a challenge and it really all depends because you're not fused. You're going to be fine. <laughs> I will just say that. Like for me, it was just a, it was only an issue because of how low I'm fused. Um, so that's really where my anxiety came from is just, would I be able to handle it? Because the scenario I was, my biggest fear was if I can't handle the pain, they would then have to put me out completely and have a C-section. 
And so that just that, like the fear of that was really, you know, it was intense. So I had to do a lot of mind work, a lot of breath work, like a lot of meditation just to kind of overcome that. Thank you for sharing that. Of course. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And I feel like your positive outlook, especially during your recovery, really helped lead you to your successes now. Um, and of course, reaching your goal of having a family, all of those wonderful things. So um, after your initial diagnosis, it must have been really difficult to wear your brace for 23 and a half hours a day, just to not see improvements, and then to be told you needed to have surgery. So when was the turning point for you that you said, you know what, I can do this, it's going to be fine? <laughs> um, I think I, I was just so, I think every, going to every appointment and just feeling so defeated um, seeing my curves progress despite the brace. Um, I, I finally, I finally just accepted that this, cause they had talked about spinal fusion surgery. Like it was something that it wasn't just like the last appointment they told me it was, you know, they had kind of prepared me for that. Um, and so I think by that last appointment, I was just so fed up with the brace and so fed up with I was starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. My curves are, I think it's like 54 and 50 something on the bottom. Like I have two like pretty large sizable curves. Um, and I had heard that, you know, if it gets any worse, it could start affecting your, your breathing, your writ, like it could just get, you know, not good. So I was just ready to feel good again and like ready to move on with my life. And I wanted to put this behind me. So I think it was kind of, kind of that in a way. Um, and then from that point on is when I had to do like the mental and physical work to face that next challenge, which was spinal fusion. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. I had a very similar experience to you. And so I can definitely relate to finally being like, I just need to have the surgery yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> onto your wellness journey. Yes. Uh, so you touched on this a little bit with Paige's question about um, any anxieties surrounding pregnancy and you talked about your epidural. So I'm just going to adjust my question a little bit. Was there anything you were worried about postpartum in relation to your spinal fusion that also ended up being just fine that, you know, worked out for the better? Um, postpartum, honestly, I wasn't really worried about anything too much postpartum. I do have more back pain after having my two kids and you know, I have to address that still, it's still kind of new. Um, but I do think it's, there's something with like pushing that maybe kind of threw something off alignment. Um, that's just my gut. My gut is telling me that something is kind of off because it's ever since having kids that my lower back is having more pain, but it also could just be like my core needs to be tightened some more, kind of a mixture of both. Um, so I wasn't expecting that. So that's, that's one kind of like slightly negative that I, but obviously very manageable and I can deal with that. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, like my worst fear, um, just going into both births was having to be put out completely and just have a C-section. And, you know, thankfully that didn't happen. Um, and I, I got through it and I found that strength to just get through it. And everybody, if you want kit, you can hundred percent do it. Like whatever the pain meds you end up with, like it's a hundred percent manageable. And I can't speak highly enough of hypnobirthing. It really helped me. Yeah. It sounds like it prepared you so well for mm -hmm. your pregnancies and just getting back on track mentally and physically. So that is amazing. My final question for you is looking back throughout your entire scoliosis journey, what was the most difficult thing that you faced? And then what was the biggest highlight for you? So the most difficult was definitely bracing. The bracing sucked. I hate like wearing it for 23 and a half hours a day. It was tough, but I was dedicated to it. Um, I followed my doctor's orders. Um, and then the highlight, I think the highlight is like now 20 years later, being able to connect with all of you guys, you know, hopefully helping other parents out there who have a, a young child with scoliosis or facing spinal fusion. I had a lot of moms like commenting on my Instagram recently. So just connecting and tr helping in any way I can has been the highlight. Yeah. Finding community is so important. So thank you for sharing your story with us today. Of course. Hi, Lindsay. Um, I'm Courtney. It's been a while. So, I know. 
I think it is in Florida to, uh, for the patient and parent scoliosis event. Um, and I'm so happy you have children. Congratulations. I remember back then you were just looking into it and talking with your doctor. Um, my first question is actually related to um, your pregnancies. Uh, did your doctor, other than the hypnobirthing, um, did your doctors have anything specific during or after giving birth that you had to follow because of your scoliosis? So my, with my OBG, like they, they hadn't seen many situations with spinal fusion. So there was nothing that they told me to do or to not do or anything. Um, uh, it's the one thing I would recommend is to meet with, if, if you do want pain management, I would recommend bringing your x-ray with you, um, your post-surgery x-ray and meeting with the anesthesiologist, um, beforehand, like a few months beforehand, just so they can kind of evaluate. And again, it really depends on how low you're fused so they can be prepared. Um, and they can kind of let, let you know, like they didn't give me a definitive answer. So I didn't know going into that day if I was going to be able to have the epidural or not. Um, so I just think that it would be great for anybody with a fusion to bring their x-ray and meet with the anesthesiologist um, a few months beforehand. Awesome. That, that's really awesome that there's not much you have to worry about other than that. And then there's always ways to work around that. So congratulations again. Um, my second question for you is in an industry that focuses a lot on image, how is having scoliosis any scar in the modeling industry? Um, again, like I kind of forget that I have scoliosis and a scar because honestly, like in my almost 20 year career, it's only happened once that a makeup artist went to like cover it up with concealer, like one time. So, and I think that's pretty cool. And a lot of I mean, I think there was even a Victoria's Secret campaign where my back was like completely exposed, um, but they did a really good job of um, keeping my scar really fine. And because it's a longer spine, I think it kind of, it's becomes a bit hidden. Um, so it really hasn't impacted my career at all in a negative way. Um, and like I said, it's something that I'm really proud of and it's a conversation starter. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you've also touched a lot on just always having a positive mindset. And that's really awesome that you're advocating for that and pushing for that. Um, I also found that staying in a positive mindset made the world more tangible, even with scoliosis or scar. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is struggling to try to hide, uh, like stay in that positive mindset? So my mantra lately has been focused on what's working in your life. Like no matter what your challenge is, there's always something that is working. There's always something that is positive, you know? Um, so I think that goes for anybody, no matter what the challenge might be, um, to focus on the things that you're grateful for and the things that are working. And I really do think that helps. Awesome. Great advice. And uh, thank you so much for answering our questions and for continuing to be an awesome advocate. No problem. Thank you guys. So it was so nice to share my story with all of you guys and to answer your questions and connect with all of you guys. Again, I really think that scoliosis, um, 20 years later, it's really only impacted me in a positive way. It hasn't held me back at all in my life. It's just given me such an inner strength, um, which has helped me to achieve a lot. And I'm very proud of my scar. Thank you guys so much.